Secure Act 2.0, allowing for de minimis incentives, what does this mean for those looking to begin saving for retirement? Here to talk about this with me today is Mike Webb from CapTrust. How are you doing today, Mike? I'm doing fine, Michael. Yeah. So I guess, like, wanted to get a bigger, um, bigger idea of the picture. How important has Secure Act 2.0 been this year for retirement, retirement saving? Retirement oh, planning. I think it- yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty much uh, a game changer. Uh, there are so many things now, uh, tools in the arsenal, so to speak, uh, that uh, plan sponsors have that they didn't have before. And one of the many, of course, is this now this uh, what they call this de minimis. I hate when I hate when complicated words are used in, <laughs> in trying to until you address participant needs but that was what they call it de minimis incentives to incentivize participants to uh to save for retirement what are your thoughts on those kinds of incentives like do you see them possibly working as a way to motivate uh not only do i see them possibly working but uh, obviously uh a record keeper has come out already come out and said hey uh you know we're going to give people money um uh, money doesn't grow on trees. They don't do this out uh, of the, you know, the greatness of their hearts. They do it because they think they're going to get a return on investment, meaning that $250 that they give to somebody, it, it's you know the, the plan assets for that person are going to grow by way more than $250. So that's why they do it. Um, and I think from a plan sponsor perspective, again, it's another tool. It's another tool in the arsenal. Um, you know, is our our uh, participant meetings, our four hundred one k four three b enrollment meetings, the most fun thing for participants that they can be? Well, they better be because people aren't going to show up to them if they're not. So things like offering a gift card, or offering a gift card to somebody who you know answers the right question at the me, you know, the right question at the meeting, um, is right ranks right up there with like feeding people, um, which is a good motivate for them to come. Making the meeting, you know, playing games in the meeting, making the meeting fun. It's just another tool, again, in the tool in the tool shed for getting people to say, hey, you know, I, I'm excited. I want to, you know, I want to go to this because I'm going to, I want to be uh, excited about my financial future and I want to be engaged. Like, how do you, how do you see them possibly comparing to the more traditional strategies of automatic enrollment for a plan or the employer match? Um, well, the employer match is always, I think is always going to be, unless, unless Congress comes up with some other wonderful idea, um, the employer match is always going to be at the forefront because that's, that's the skin in the game. We always tell people, you know, if you don't do this, you're leaving money on the table. So we want to, you know, we want to, we always emphasize that as number, as the number one thing, um, to get individuals into the plan. Um, and of course, obviously, you know, We've already been major league helped with engagement already by automatic enrollment because you're in the plan unless you opt out. And most people, you're taking advantage of inertia. Um, they're not going to, if, if they're if they're put in the plan, chances are they're not going to say, hey, you know, I don't want that money to be taken out of my paycheck. Now, some of them might because they just say they can't afford it. But again, that's why someone like me could get in front of them and say, you know, you really can't afford it. Um, you know, you're paying $100 for your smartphone that you could pay $15 for. And I'm not saying you have to save that whole 85 in the plan. Take, you know, take half of that and then save the rest, you know, save the rest of the retirement plan. But if I never get in front of them, that's not going to happen. So something like a, a gift card is a way for people like me to get in front of them. Like, how many people do you think... How many people do you think companies and retirement plans can get on board with this as a strategy? You know, I, 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 I don't truly know the answer to that. It's definitely greater than it's definitely much greater than zero, mm-hmm. and we've already seen that by you know a major provider out there saying, "Hey, we're going to give people two hundred and fifty again." People don't do that unless they think they're going to get a return on that investment. Um, some employers, if they've got you know. <laughs> Let's just say, you know, your average automatically enrolled employer probably has an area of 90% participation. So they've already beaten the game, if you will, on, on those 90%. It's just a matter of maybe getting those 90% to save even more or getting the 10% to come in. And, you know, so so this is really just an enhancement of that. So, you know, it's not a situation where maybe they have to 
get a hundred percent employees to go to meeting hundred percent employees to go to meetings on the promise of a of a gift card because a lot of those employees maybe are already saving as much as they can and then you know we don't have an issue with them so but i think it's going to make a certain difference for where employers want to achieve a goal so if an employer is achieving a goal let's just say employers having a lot of opt-outs like 20 percent and they want to minimize that to say 10 well getting someone like me in front of those folks to 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 explain to those folks that yes they really can afford to save in a lot of cases um, is going to have a tremendous impact. And I think in the, for those employers, that there's going to be hopefully nearly 100% adoption of, of small financial incentives. Where do you think this type of strategy can lead? And where what are other types of strategies do you think will arise to get people to start saving retirement, especially for the millennials and people in Generation Z that are starting to get into the thick of their careers? Yeah. Well, I think this leads, again, this is a, a tool of what should be many in the arsenal. Um, but I think in a, in, a, in a best case scenario, let's just say this one service provider, we, we only know this one service provider so far, I haven't heard of anybody else yet. Let's just say they come out with a study and say, you know what, for that 250 we gave individuals, it resulted for each individual of a, of a $2,000 gain in their retirement account balance. Well, then everybody, every other service provider out there is going to go, you know, wow, wow that's such a deal. I'm, you know, putting in 250 to make a, at least a thousand, and that's only one year. I'm going to do this right away. So I think where it could lead is a lot of other service providers and record keepers taking the same, you know, following this one service provider's lead. And then when that happens, you know, when you have the service providers involved, that's that's really going to make this a game changer like an automatic enrollment or, or or match but i think for right now to answer the second part of your question it's just another way to draw employees to the table um just like we talked about name changing um you know we don't call it retirement for people who are young we call it financial independence or how would you like to not have to worry about money <laughs> Um, by doing, by having, you know, having savings. Um, we don't call it retirement. That's one tool in the arsenal. Um, this 250 is another one. If I can get people to a meeting and, you know, and, and give them a, you know, give them a gift card, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll increase, maybe they'll increase that deferral. But for some employees, maybe just saying it's about financial freedom or independence and, and your future and not about retirement might be enough or feeding them might be enough. Or I might have to do all three before I get that person who's previously opted out or is deferring at the minimum and needs to defer more into the plan. Is there anything else I didn't ask about that you'd like to bring up? I, I think, you know, there are, there are also certain things that can be done. We talked about the issue of, of um, someone's financial future. Or um, a lot of these plans are structured so that they absolutely can't take any money out until they retire. You know, they can't access loans, they can't access draws. And I think that's probably another tool in the arsenal that an employer can look at, their liquidity provisions. Because let's face it, if I'm talking about someone saving for their financial future and that's not necessarily for retirement, then you know, I shouldn't I shouldn't restrict withdrawals only to retirement or loans or retirement necessarily. Now, sometimes I do that because I have individuals who just, you know, if I give them an inch, they're going to take a mile and they're just going to be keep borrowing and borrowing and withdrawing and withdrawing until they have nothing left of their retirement benefit. But I think most individuals are very responsible when given that opportunity. And some, you know, the vast majority actually never, never access it at all. But I think if I told them, hey, you know, here's a plan that's not completely, you know, off limits to you until you retire, it gets, again, sends that same message to those younger folks because if they look, they might look at it as, oh, I can never access this until I retire. That's not, that's not for me. Um, so that's, I think that's another thing that gets lost in the conversation about small incentives is bigger plan design issues that employers may have with the liquidity of their plans. Yeah. That's, that's all I really have to ask today. I really appreciate you coming on, coming on here with me today, uh, Mike. Well, but thank you very much. It's always uh, always a pleasure to talk about 
um, getting people to, you know, getting people to save more. That's what we're all here for.